Hey guys, how's it going? So uh, today I am going to do a first impression let's play a review of a game called of Blades and Tales. As always with all of my first impression let's play reviews I'm going to be playing the game for an hour or more until I am satisfied that I can give you my, you my opinion on the game. If you are in a hurry and you don't want to watch the full video, then you can simply skip to the last 10 minutes or so of the video where I will give you my quick concise final opinion on the game and tell you whether I can recommend the game or not. But uh, otherwise you can just stay tuned and I will be playing the game and I will be giving you my a running commentary on the game and I will be telling you what I think is good about the game and what I think is bad about the game as we play through the game. So um, the game is a uh, turn-based uh, top-down game. It is actually very very similar to another game which I have played and reviewed on my channel called uh, Tangle Deep. So I have reviewed a game that is extremely similar to this game called Tangle Deep. And I really like Tangle Deep. It is really quite a good game. Now, this game uh, has two things that already right off the bat count against it. And that is the fact that the game costs exactly the same as Tangle Deep does and the fact that it is developed by a solo developer, Felix Local. So um, that counts against this developer because I have yet to find a game that is developed by a solo developer or a single developer that is as good as your average game. It is just a fact of life that one person cannot make a good uh, game as good as your regular studio games, like a game that comes from a studio. Now, uh, I assume that uh, a small studio like the one that created Tangle Deep doesn't have many people they it, it's an indie studio and i think tangle deep was their first game perhaps so um they obviously don't have the the largest team but even if they have five people that's already four more people than what this game has and like i say Solo dev games simply do not have the quality and the content and the polish that games have that come from a regular studio. So this game has two disadvantages right off the bat, but we will see today if the game can be as good as Tangle Deep. It needs to be at least as good as Tangle Deep because it's asking the same money. So it's going up directly against a game like Tangle Deep. There are others, but Tangle Deep is one that I have reviewed and one that I actually do enjoy. And it's one that costs exactly the same money as this game does. So uh there are a couple of issues with the game already um the game does not enjoy running on full screen mode uh i had an issue where i put the game on full screen mode took it off full screen mode and then my mouse disappeared like literally my mouse just disappeared and then i had to um restart the game i had to struggle with because i couldn't see my mouse i had to struggle and go down and then struggle and then go over there and then click like it's really an annoyance so for some reason if you put the game off full screen mode back on full screen mode the mouse disappears another issue 
is the fact that you can't even select the screen resolution. So I will show you here quickly. By the way, this is the game that I that I referenced, Tangle Deep. Uh, you can see I did review it. I did do a review on Steam way back 2017. So it's probably around that time that I did my actual review on my channel as well. I sometimes do reviews on Steam and then I don't do reviews on my channel simply because I don't have the time. Like I do not have the time to review all of the games. Like I have a lot of games uh, and I simply cannot review all of them. You can see there are 1500 games. I just do not have the time to review all of the games so um, I do have many games that I still need to play and uh, review um, so I, I do have a lot of games that I, I simply leave a steam review but don't review on my channel it's just I'm just one person so since each review takes two hours if I were going to review view each of my 1500 games that would be at least 3000 hours and I don't have that much time so uh, I reviewed it played it on my channel like I say very good game it's a it's a turn based um, it's almost rogue like uh, I've had this discussion before very few games who claim to be uh, roguelike games are actually roguelike games and this game can actually claim to be a little bit roguelike the graphics isn't like rogue but the play style is definitely like rogue so this game comes pretty close to being an actual rogue like it, it's tagged with the traditional roguelike tag which isn't really correct it's not a traditional rogue like it, it doesn't look like rogue so it can't really claim to be a rogue like but let's not get into that discussion again i've had that discussion before um so then we also have blades and tails so um to show you um this over a year we do that and then we do that and then you see the game, when I switch to the game, the game uh, goes black for a while. Uh, so that's the first issue. Then we take it off full screen mode. And then you can see that there's no way to select your, uh, your resolution. So you can't even drag the the window bigger like you can see when i when i hover over the side there's no way to resize the window and make the window bigger so you literally have to play at the this is uh 1080p so this window because my my canvas my desktop resolution is 4k resolution so I know by experience that this is 1080p even though it doesn't say it anywhere I know from experience this is 1080p so you you only have two options with this game you have to play the game at 1080p or full screen those are you your only options you can't even resize the window like it's just really really stupid and then when you force the window to be maximized like when you when you force maximized the window it then looks like this so that's then how the game looks if you force maximize the window which is obviously really shitty because there's black borders at the side there's the white um, bar at the top it just looks really really shitty so you either have to play it like this which obviously is really shitty um, or you have to play it like this at 1080p or you can play it like this which is full screen and then the screen goes black again 
Um, so it's just really not good. The, 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 the uh, resolution options and the display options of the game is rather terrible. And there's also no FPS options anywhere. So I have a sneaking suspicion you can actually see on the um, recording if I move my mouse quickly. It really looks like the game is running at 30 FPS, which is another issue. Like 30 FPS gaming, this isn't 2005 anymore. This is 2023. You need to make your game run at 60 FPS. And it looks like this game simply isn't, it's simply not happening on this game. So those are the issues that you get when you have a solo developer and they don't know exactly what they're doing because all of these issues can be resolved. I've played solo developer games in the past. I've actually reviewed probably 20 or 30 or 40 uh, solo developer games uh, throughout the past years and a lot of them do have resolution options. A lot of them do allow you to... Um, select 60 fps or 30 fps uh, a lot of them do not have these display issues so um it's just unfortunately this developer isn't very ad adept at um programming it it would seem because uh, if the, they were then the game would have variable resolutions it would have a functioning full screen mode where the mouse doesn't randomly disappear and the screen go black um all of that kind of stuff so anyway uh those are, are a couple of issues already before we get into the game so uh let us then get into the game i also like that uh, they have the 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 icon for zitter already at the top i don't know why they wouldn't just use the regular twitter icon instead of the zitter twitter uh, the zitter icon but anyway uh, i guess they like elon musk um so relaxed adventure challenging okay so here's another issue already uh, i've uh, highlighted this issue a, a lot in previous games and i will continue to highlight it as long as developers do this kind of shit so when you select easy medium or hard you should be told what is actually changing so here you are being told more health more damage receive significantly more experience and then here nothing so this is you would expect 100 percent so this is more than 100 percent this is 100 percent and then this is less than 100 percent you would expect because it says that you will encounter more and tougher enemies which means they will have more health and there will be more of them and then it also uh, re uh, disables recovery at bonfires fast travel costs more gold and you will lose parts of your xp and coins upon defeat so it drops loot a little bit so what should be shown here because this is a video game with numbers it should be showing numbers here just imagine that we are playing a video game we should be shown numbers uh this is not some in informal conversation when you when you say oh i've been sleeping more recently or i've been jogging more recently or i've been driving more in my car recently this isn't that kind of situation this is a fucking video game i want to know egg fucking exactly how much more health will we start with? How much more damage exactly will we have? How much more experience points exactly will we gain? Like this is a video game. You need to have numbers. Numbers are very important, especially in a RPG game where you are going to want to m minimize, maximize, min-max your character and your gameplay experience so you have no fucking idea like when it says more and tougher enemies you have no idea if 
It's a thousand percent more enemies and a thousand percent more health on the enemies. You have no idea. Could be a thousand percent, could be two percent. You have no idea at all. So you really have no idea, you have no way to gauge what you are getting yourself into. You have no idea. Like, if this was 10%, I would play on this mode. But if it's 200%, I'm definitely not going to play on this mode. Especially since you are only punished on this mode. Like, I will play on uh, a higher difficulty, like uh, Titan Quest or anything like that gives you the option to play on a higher difficulty but then they also reward you with higher loot drops higher tiers of loot drops and stuff like that so i will totally play on a higher difficulty if i am rewarded in some way you know more gold more experience more whatever uh, sacred uh, also did that uh, so there's various different games that do that where the game is more difficult but you get more loot or more experience or more gold or, or whatever you know so this game only punishes you on the higher difficulties and it only rewards you on the uh, lower difficulties it also says you will receive significantly more experience points so i don't know is it is it 30 percent is it 50 percent is it a hundred percent like um, you, you really have no way of knowing. So this is a really big issue because this choice right here will affect your next potential 10 hours, 15 hours, 20 hours. I don't know how big the game is, but it's going to affect the next 20 hours of your playthrough. So this little choice here is very important and you have no fucking idea what you are getting yourself into apart from with this one this one you would expect is 100 percent or all across the board 100 percent but with this one you have no idea and with this one you have no idea so this is not good so uh, we are going to take normal i'm assuming this is normal so we're gonna take normal so that's not good and then we have to read. Once upon a time, mankind lived on Earth. But one day they disappeared without a trace. Soon after, the world began to change. I couldn't even finish the reading. Hey, it shows uh, Africa. Magic was born. It gave us the gift of speech and the use of our hands. And we turned into bears, apparently. And we grew tails, apparently. We are magical beings, but do we make the same mistakes as mankind, or are we better than them? Oh, so we we are literally animals. So we are not we are not humans. That's why it shows like a bear. Oh, you can actually move your mouse like this, but you can't go backwards. Um, so it actually shows a bear because we do we are animals even though this shows like a fox fox type creature and in the main menu it also showed a fox type creature so i'm i'm assuming we are foxes i'm assuming we can't select to be a bear or anything like that yeah we are a fox I would have liked it if you could choose your race, you know, like a fox or a lizard creature or something like that, you know, or a bear. Uh, almost there. I just need to follow this path and should be back at the village before night falls. Hmm. I wonder if Aro is already back from his expedition. I haven't heard anything from him in days. All right. I shouldn't waste too much time now. Let's... Just hope that there are no more dangers lurking around here. Obviously, there's going to be dangers. There's going to be dangers like a motherfucker. 
So uh, the game, like I said, is like um, like uh, Tangle Deep. Why couldn't I think about the name? It is like Tangle Deep. And uh, there's actually another game as well that I did play and review on my channel that is actually similar to this game called uh, Stone Shard. Stone Shard, I remember now. Um, I actually like that game as well, uh, thinking about it. Stone Shard. Um, so it is turn-based. So uh, each turn, each time that you move is a turn so so you move once then the opponent moves once then you move once then the opponent moves once so that's basically how the game goes i see you can also click to move around like this which is uh, cool uh you can't go against that so yeah this is the type of game or the the type of movement that you have Okay, we found no we didn't find we have to click on it okay so there's no tutorial for that you have to figure out on your own that when you are above something you have to click on it so no tutorial for that at all so i guess you just move and then if you happen to stand on on something that you can loot then you just have to stand still for a second and click on on the loot bar at the top and then it will be looted i guess not not really a a loot system that i like to be honest mm -hmm. what do we have over here looks like a medicinal herb shouldn't miss out on that Yes, that's exactly the kind of thing you should always carry with you. It is not as effective as a brute potion, but it can help to recover quickly after a fight. It, I should pocket it and use it when needed. So you just click on it like that, boom. Like I wonder, oh, Alt. Okay, so you can press Alt. Once again, I had to figure that out on my own. You can press Alt, you can see there at the bottom, to, to highlight stuff. Ah, there's an enemy. Enemy spotted. Insect Scout, right click for more information. Relies mainly on physical attacks, relatively robust. And then it shows damage, 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 sight range. Hey, interesting. Come on, my friend. Okay, so that's pretty standard. Um, oh, we get a sword. That's pretty much exactly the same how combat works in a game like... Um, like uh, Tangle Deep, for instance, or Stone Shard. Uh, I wish you could highlight. Can you highlight stuff constantly or not? Let me just turn down the ambient a little bit because that's a little bit too bad. No, I'm not seeing any way to keep it active. That's not good. Like, you should be able to keep the highlighting thing active because that's simply the way it should work. Like, if you think about Path of Exile, uh, Titan Quest, Diablo, anything like that, you can keep the highlight uh, stuff, the highlighting items on the ground you can keep it active permanently uh, and in this game you simply can't do that so in this game you have to constantly press alt 
uh, every now and then to see if there is actually something that you can loot. So I'm not a fan of that, to be honest. Ouch. Okay, how do we heal? Uh, okay, I don't necessarily want to use a magic potion right now. Uh, can't we just like recover like regularly? Ah, oh, you can. Okay, 11. Okay, is it going to go higher than 11 or not? No, it's not going higher than 11. So why did it go from 3 to 11? But it's not going higher than 11. Why? Please tell me why. Why does the shit just stay there? Um, okay, so I only have one of those. Restores 5 health when there are no dangers nearby. Okay, that's not bad. So we can use one of those. That's pretty good. Okay, we are full health again. Come on, are you gonna spit or are you not gonna spit? Okay, just like that. Oh, and this stays active as well, so that's pretty cool. You, it even stays active after you've done a combat or taken a hit. That's not bad. Okay, we can move on to the next area. I'm just gonna hold, hold alt for the most part. It's um, unfortunate that you have to fucking hold alt probably for hours and hours and hours and hours throughout your game but um, you don't have another choice really you're just gonna have to hold, hold alt for the longest time really uh, there does pop gold out but I don't see that I'm actually getting gold I don't think we can go into that house doesn't look like it at least. Okay, so where am I supposed to go? Um, okay, so you press M, uh, M to have the map. don't get a lot of information you can't zoom in or out or anything like that you can just move the map that doesn't help ah oh, there we go tab okay so you press tab to do that once again no tutorial in sight um, so where am I supposed to go really Can we see our quests? Nope. Uh, nope. Ah, here we go. Nope, no, no active quests. That's our character. So we, we don't have any quests. We have n nothing right now. So I guess um, we just have to walk around Ria mm -hmm. uh, Rake, what can I do for you? What can you tell me? 
I heard further north a merchant was attacked by crawlers, but I guess I have to wait a long time for my delivery now. I wonder what brought him there. Okay. Uh, who the fuck do I need to talk to in this city? Ah, there we go. Break your back and well. Uh, she waves at you. Come here, we need to talk. We were talking, why didn't you just finish talking? I take it you haven't heard from Aro either. I'm starting to get a little worried. It's not like him to go this long without reporting in as far as I know. He was going to explore a new crawler lair to the east. Basically nothing a seasoned fighter can't handle. Uh, so to the east, northeast. Uh, Raik, I wouldn't ask if I didn't have such a bit bad feeling. You're his best student. Can you go see what's going on? Don't take any unnecessary risks. One more thing. You should definitely meditate by the bonfire on the things Aro taught you beforehand and feel free to take any equipment from our training area in preparation for any dangers you might encounter. Yeah, well, I fucking went out um, on my my initial journey with nothing, literally nothing. Like I I didn't have a sword. I had fucking nothing. So the fact that I was even allowed to go out initially with nothing is really ridiculous. Would you like to learn about talents? Uh, once you level up, bonfire. So this is Dark Souls. Uh, there are v a variety of talents, lines, blah blah blah. Some talents require a certain weapon type to use them. Oh, I don't like that at all. I don't like it at all when you are limited to use certain weapons. Like with a bow, a bow I can understand. Like certain ranged abilities you're only going to be able to use with a bow. But when, when you have melee weapons, abilities that you can only use with a dagger or only use with a hammer or only use with a javelin that pisses me off um you'll find that some abilities are offensive other decent defensive others simply give movement may well ba -ba -ba -ba. multiple tenants to prepare for tricky situations of the active abilities you have learned you can drag five onto your ability bar you can change this composition at any time at a bonfire. Why only at a bonfire? That's fucking stupid. Learned perks are always available. Abilities that are covered with a question mark require additional knowledge to unlock also called expertise. Expertise can be gained during the course of the game, either by exploring the world or joining factions later in the game. It is also possible to reset all your abilities. Blah blah blah. To do this, find a shrine of oblivion. Apparently, we are playing Elder Scrolls Oblivion. One should not be too far from your home village. Okay, fantastic. Uh, so what if you click here? Can we actually... I guess we can actually distribute this, these. Okay, strength affects your physical damage and physical resistance. Make the talent, so unarmed and one-handed and shields. So it, it gives you, it doesn't give you any base value, it literally just gives you plus one equipment bonus. How the hell does that work? Okay. Uh, intelligence it affects your elemental and arcane damage as well as their resistances. Dexterity affects your dodge chance and minorly your physical damage affects your critical hit chance and the chance to detect hidden objects okay so there's hidden objects in the game as well affects your max stamina mana and minorly your resistance is stamina is that stamina oh we even have stamina i didn't even notice that 
Uh, vitality affects your max health. Hey, it, it doesn't even show you. Like, that's really bad. Like, on your health. Okay, 32. Okay, it does show you. So, one point gives two health. That's very, very little, but okay. Uh, okay, so I'm not going to do that right now. Let's see what talents we have. Uh, resting at the bonfire saves your progress and gives you the opportunity to adjust your abilities to your upcoming adventures. Additionally, you can stay here to, to pass some time. Uh, meditate. Two points available. Efficiency describes your capability with this talent, okay? So why is some of them 85% and some of them 75%? What is actually affecting it? It is primarily affected by dexterity and secondarily willpower. Okay, but I have... Okay, so dexterity is the only thing that I have plus 6 on. Let's see. Okay, let's do a test quickly. Ah, okay, so now everything is 75, okay, so that makes sense, so um, by having more stats of a, of a particular stat, that affects the power of your talents, so it, it's pretty much the same as in Dark Souls, um, so that's understandable. But I don't like that system, I have to be honest. Um, I don't like the fact that you essentially now, at the beginning of the game, have to choose are you going to stack strength so that you can do a lot of one-handed damage or, or pull, pull arm damage or whatever, or are you going to stack intelligence so that you can go for magic and then basically for the rest of the game when you pick up a, a a really good shield or a really good crossbow or whatever you're simply not going to be able to use it because you have basically locked yourself into playing with magic or playing with two handers or what the hell ever like i don't like that it it really limits the flexibility of the game you know i would much 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 prefer just the regular old stat system like diablo 2 titan quest path of exile where you just strength if you stack strength you do more melee damage if you stack intelligence you do more magic damage if you stack uh dexterity you can dodge more, you can crit more, and you can do more uh, damage with certain weapons. You know, that kind of stuff. Like, this thing I don't like. I don't like this very much at all. Uh, and shields don't even benefit... Well, they benefit a little bit for, from strength, but they don't benefit much. So if you, for instance, take something that benefits from dexterity like for instance ranged weapons i'm assuming you can get uh one-handed ranged weapons even though there's a bow and a crossbow i don't know if the crossbow is potentially single-handed uh, let's see like a wand for instance that's a good example so if you want to use a shield and a wand that means you're going to have to stack intelligence and then you are going to have to stack vitality. So you're going to have to stack two different things. Whereas if you are doing one-handed and shields, then basically you can just stack strength and a little bit of strength uh, also benefits shields. So that's a much better um, combo. I guess I can say in the game because you're not wasting stats you don't have to divide your stats so much like you need to do if you were shields and 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 uh, uh, 
magic, you have to divide your stats between vitality and strength and intellect and willpower. So you're going to have to stack those four stats, which is not very efficient at all. Whereas if you went one-handed and shields, you can basically just stack strength and a little bit of vitality maybe, and then you will have a pretty powerful character, you know? So I don't like that system. That's my biggest issue so far. I don't like that system. It, it's not very good for um, freedom. So you also get some talent type stuff here. Athletics, dirty tricks, beast mastery, engineering. Beast mastery might be good. Even though it doesn't say what Beast Mastery does. So that's an expertise skill. So you need expertise for those. It doesn't say what any of this does. Uh, teleports you to target position. Allows you to switch between weapon sets instantly. Increases your dodge chance by 400% for two turns. That's really good. And then the cooldown is five seconds. Increases your movement points by one. Applies following effects when triggering tr triggered by enemy deals 50% fixed physical damage. And stuns for two seconds. Cooldown six. Increases your movement points by two. Decreases your received damage by five for talent. Survival. What the fuck does that mean? Decrease your received damage by five percent. Or talent survival. What does that mean? So it reduces damage received by 5%, but only for talent survival? Oh, what, what does that mean? That doesn't make sense. Uh, increase your perception by 300%. Restores 50% of your max stamina as health. That's very nice. Healing, I think, will be very good in this game. It it was certainly very good in Tangle Deep. Um, so healing in this game, I think, will be really nice. I don't know if you can do a healing, if there's a healing talent or a healing uh, specialization, really. Let me have a look here. I also think ranged combat will be really good. Yeah, so, so far I'm not seeing any healing. no healing whatsoever that I'm seeing anywhere which is really stupid I really would have liked it if there were some some form of healing somewhere like apart from apart from this one I'm not seeing any healing anywhere That's not good. Um, so we need to choose basically what we want. I think ranged is going to be very good. The only place where ranged isn't good is in dungeons. Like in dungeons ranged is not good. Um, because you lose a lot of your 
range uh, advantage. Restores ten percent stamina for every base attack with a range. But these abilities are stupid. Like these are really stupid abilities. Confusing shots. That's stupid. That's good. That's a good one. That's the first good one that I've seen on the entire ranged tree. So ranged just seems really stupid, to be honest. I'm really disappointed in ranged. Like you see here, uh, the block exists for a few turns and then bursts, affecting all nearby targets. It doesn't say anything about damage, so it doesn't say what the affecting does, it doesn't say the burst range, like how many squares, it doesn't say any damage, like what the fuck, this is the most terrible um, description on a skill ever, really provides zero information. That's a 3x3 three three area, but it has a one turn delay. Teleport will be nice to get, a, get out of uh, sticky situations. Oh, and this is really stupid as well. Like. You only benefit from the 10% mana when you attack with an arcane one. So once again, that will completely limit you to only using arcane ones. You can't even use other ones. Like literally, you can't use uh, fire ones. You can't use pole arms, which are like staffs. You, you literally have to use an arcane wand. That's really limiting. So not only does it limit you to using wands, it limits you to using a specific type of wand as well. That's really crazy. I just don't have a lot of confidence in any of these skills, I have to be honest. They do not inspire confidence. Like, I would have liked it if you could maybe choose engineering or something like that from the beginning but you can't even do that just like if the this is all of the skills that you get in the entire game then this game is really quite weak when it comes to the character progression like this is very little character progression i have to be honest I think going with shields is a good choice at the beginning because 
if you pick up a good sword or you pick up a good axe or you pick up a good wand perhaps you can still use your shield you still benefit from the shield I think that's not too bad Wow, that's actually not bad. 15% more damage, and then another 15% more damage, and then another 15% more damage. This talent tree is actually really good. This one at the top, the unarmed one. Like this one, 5% more damage, 5% more damage, 5% more damage. This is fucking 15%. That's like 300% the, the effectiveness. Like, why is it such a huge fucking difference? Like, even this one, 5%. 5%, and then, boom, 15%. Like, why is this one 300, well, 200% more powerful than everything else in the game? Why? Doesn't make sense. Like, where's the balancing? If it was 20% or 30% or 40% more powerful, you could kind of understand, but 200% more powerful. And the abilities are not bad either, like this thick fur is really good, 100% more physical resistance for 3 turns is very good. This one is really good because it adds a bleeding to the target so you can, you can attack it. And they just run away and the, the enemy will bleed itself to death. Uh, restoring stamina, even though I don't know what you would really use stamina for, apart from this and this, which costs 2 stamina and 3 stamina. Uh, this one is an area attack. Always hits critically. And then it adds bleed to all of them. And then for five turns, every turn restores five health. So it even is like lifesteal as well. Holy shit, that's very good. Yeah, this is exceptionally good for some reason. The unarmed is more powerful than any of the other fucking abilities. Like the other abilities are really weak source, to be honest. I think I'm gonna go for unarmed. But then I need to find an un unarmed uh, weapon. And I don't know how the game does deal wielding. Like, I don't know. Um, I don't know what deal, deal wielding. If you can even deal wield in the game. I guess we will see when I get the second weapon if you, if we can actually deal wield. Oh, we get some free items here. That's not bad. Max range 3. Wow, 3 range is not a whole lot to be honest. Oh, and the wand takes up both slots, so the wand is two-handed. That's really stupid. is four range. How do you compare? Oh, hold right click to compare. 
Well, that's not exactly comparing, is it? Like, I'm holding right click and it simply switches to the other item. So it, it's not even comparing. You're simply switching to the other item. That's not good. That's not a proper way to compare. I guess we can use the sword and the shield for now, since I don't have something to, to, to deal wield it with right now. Um, and then they say to the east, we need to go to the east, but there's something over there as well to the, to the south. So let's go south and then east, I think. I also don't like the fact that you have to be standing on top of the loot if you want to loot the loot. Like, that's not good. Where's the enemy? I'm not seeing shit. There's another enemy spotted. Where are the enemies? Okay, there's one enemy, but it's not even highlighting the enemy. Like, why doesn't it highlight the enemy? Where are these, all of these enemies I'm supposedly spotting? Another one, like where are all of these enemies? Okay, there's one. Oh, it's running away, okay. Bastard is running fast. Hey, bandit rogue, come on, come closer. Bandit warrior, bandit rogue. I just want to face one of you. You can't move when you when you are zoomed out like this. That's not very good. I would have liked it if you could. Uh. Uh. What the fuck? That did you teleport or what was that? Okay, this is gonna hurt. He's gonna get a free hit on me right now. He's gonna get another free hit on me right now. hell he keeps teleporting I can't do anything about it like when do they stop attacking you holy holy hell and they have teleporting abilities and shit like that 
and you don't have to fight all enemies if an enemy is stronger try to bypass them or return yeah well i was trying to fucking return uh use your abilities i have no abilities healing ba -ba 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 -ba. yeah that's fine like that's really crazy that he can that they can just like teleport 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 like fucking hell crazy shits Okay, well, I didn't lose anything. Uh, I lost gold. I definitely lost gold. But I thought on, on, on this mode you don't lose gold? Why did I lose gold? I selected, I explicitly selected the mode that you don't lose anything. So... Is the game just lying to you? Let's see if a sack dropped or something like that with my gold. Where exactly was it? It wasn't down this much, was it? Yeah, it definitely wasn't down this much, so... So I don't see any sack or anything like that anywhere. So I'm assuming you don't uh, get the the loot back, which is really fucking stupid. And then on top of that, um, this mode I'm, I'm playing on normal it's not supposed to drop loot because it didn't say anything about dropping loot so okay so there's a dude are you alone yeah this time you see the same camp is there so it's the same camp how do you wait it has to be a wait button skip turn space okay well, space isn't doing anything, so I need to move closer, perhaps. And yeah, that's fine. Come, come closer. I just don't want to fight you and your buddy. Ah, oh, there's your friend. Absorbed. How did you get... How did you absorb? Holy shit, absorbed again. I took it. Now I need to run away. Like, how far do they fucking chase you? seemingly to the ends of the earth that they they fucking chase you like what what bullshit and like why i don't understand why i lost my gold let's have a look uh back to main menu new game you see on new new game it says ideal if you have already experience with tight tactical and like to experiment with abilities and equipment blah 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 so it doesn't say anything about losing gold or, or drop drop on death or anything like that over here it does say so over here it says blah 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 lose parts of your xp and coins upon defeat so it it didn't say it doesn't say anything on this mode or on this mode about dropping loot only on this mode does it say about dropping loot so 
Why am I dropping loot? Also, why am I not where I started? Or where I saved? Why does it put me back to the... To this place? Um... So let's test that again. Just to make 100% sure, but I am I am already very, very sure that I lost gold. I mean, I, I, I didn't have 8 gold. I definitely lost gold. And why is the map not the same map as it was? So... Like, what the fuck is going on? It's still the same quest thing that there was, but now... My progress that I made on the map is no longer there, so your progress gets wiped. Even when you just log out. Your progress gets wiped. That's really fucking stupid. So every time that you go anywhere, like let's say I go over there and I go back and then I log out and then I, when I, if I want to go back over there again, I have to fight everything again. Like literally, doesn't matter where you go, you have to fight everything. Everything gets respawned, the entire map gets re-rolled, like everything. That's really fucking stupid. Come on, is there just one of you now, or...? Ah, oh, there's the rogue bastard again. Bastard. I don't think I'm gonna be able to beat this guy... ...straight up in a fight. Especially not if his friend shows up. Okay, so I managed to beat him. So you see, I have 13 gold. I still don't understand the, the healing system. Like, previously I was like on 3 health or something, and then it automatically went, went to... Um, uh, 11 health or, or whatever. Now it's not moving at all. So I, I really don't understand the healing system. Um, I can maybe get a couple of shots off with this thing. And then switch to... Something else, maybe. Holy shit, there's another one, so this time there's three of, a, of the bastards. Okay, that one is going back. And now it has done that shield thing. Two second, two, two turns more. It doesn't show it on the dude itself. You have to right click on them and then it shows the status. I'm not a fan of that because they, they can have various buffs and you don't even see the buffs um, unless you right click on them. I just don't like that. So now it, it has the shield. Another one turn. Now it has the fucking shield again.
I spotted a trap, so what can I do with the trap? Doesn't even show what the shield actually does. I mean, does it literally just give 8, eight stamina? Doesn't it give anything else? Like physical resistance uh, is 4. And then I, if I unequip the shield, 3. It gives one physical resistance. That's not very good at all. And then this is a one-handed. So let's equip that. No. What? Okay. So you can't deal wield. Okay. So the game literally doesn't have deal wielding either. That's really shitty. So, you can't even deal wield two one-handed one swords. That's fucking stupid. Which one of these is the best? Mm, they're both pretty much the same, but I'm gonna keep the one with dexterity, uh, I think. That's really stupid that you can't deal wield, like... It just removes such a big part of the RPG fantasy. Okay, so I couldn't... Um, uh, disarm it and then here yeah nothing will happen I don't see anything that I can loot around here oh shit so yeah I I'm just really not a fan of the the fact that they reset your progress literally every time you log out like if I go down now and then obviously it's a new map and then if I go up again it's the same map but if I save and I go out and I go in again You see, it resets the entire zone, and it doesn't save you where you were, and it teleports you around. It doesn't even teleport you to the place, to your home place, it just teleports you to a random place. So now, look at that, like literally where I spawn, I now have to fight enemies. That's really fucking stupid. Like... That's fucking stupid. So what if I were in a really, really difficult area now and um, I couldn't fight my way out of it? Then I would have died because I, um, I w wasn't spawned at the place where I was supposed to be spawned. You know, like at the, at the beginning of the game. Or not even at the beginning of the game, just the, uh, the town. And then I want to test, I would just want to make sure, I'm pretty sure I lost gold, but I just want to make 100% sure. So I have 27 gold right now. Let's see if we can find any enemies. I don't know what that is. Explosive growth, okay. And like I said previously, I don't like the fact that you have to literally stand on top of loot before you are able to loot it. I'm not a fan of that at all. Now, how do I... Okay, let's die. Uh, then see, okay, our gold right now is 27. Yes, yes, yes. A 
Okay. Um, some kind of a glitch. 23. Okay, so yeah, you do lose gold. Now we have a glitch of some kind. So when I press tab, nothing happens. When I press M, what the fuck? Okay, so I'm at the top left of the map now for some bloody reason in a high threat area for some reason. And I can't see my screen at all. I can move, so okay, let's move down, down, down all the way. Oh, okay, I just uh, killed someone, I, I don't know. I'm just moving downwards. I just ki killed someone else, I don't know what that was. Okay, there we go, now we are... What the fuck, now we are... Down here again. Okay, let's go up again. Now we are here again. And the map reset again. What the fuck is going on? Okay, so I want to just 100% confirm again. 24 gold. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can just kill me. It's fine. I'm not even going to fight back or anything like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, boom. This time I didn't lose gold. So sometimes you lose gold, sometimes you don't lose gold gold i don't understand it and clearly the game has glitches um which obviously is not very good the i should point out the game is not in early access or anything like that the game is fully released this is a fully released 15 dollar title um so it's not good that the game has glitches like that big big fucking glitches i don't like the fact at all that when you spawn it uh, puts people around you, literally next to you, basically. And I don't like the fact that you aren't spawned at your home base. So if we go back to the main menu now, go back in again. And then you're spawned back uh, at the location where you were. But not the exact location where you were. Obviously I was up there, so that's another issue. I don't like the fact that... You aren't spawned where you logged out. You aren't spawned with the stuff that you... The the the, the buffs. Like, I can uh, use a buff. Like that. And then... Okay, now the game needs to save. So, let's... Uh, okay, we can actually do this and then save, I think. Let's have a look. Yes, zero minutes ago. So... I have the buff, 185, go back to main menu, we go back in again, and I lose my buff. So, you lose your buff, you lose any consumables that you used, uh, enemies are spawned around you, you are spawned in a randomly generated place each and every time, so you have to fight the same enemies that you did. Uh, to get into this place, you have to fight again to get out of the place. Um, even if you clear the zone, like I've cleared this zone, if you log out or if you die, the entire zone gets reset. So, if you, for instance, like like I did pre previously, I killed like two bandits of the camp. And obviously the chest was here, so the chest doesn't respawn. So there was a chest here, I killed two bandits, then I died. Then I respawned at the town, I went back down again, and the entire map had reset. So even though I just had to run over here, kill one more bandit and loot the chest, uh, I lost out on all of that. So you lose out on loot due to this resetting bullshit, because... Um, the map is reset each time you die and each time you log out. 
the entire map is reset like the entire map is reset so if you want to like go over there you have to fight uh, everyone in each zone like let's say you get over there you find a campfire you log out you log back in then not only will the zone that you're currently in be reset and you have to fight all of the enemies again but if you want to go back to town you have to fight or all of the enemies back to town again so all of the, the zones behind you will also have a reset so i i don't know it's just really it's not good you can't deal wield at all which is really shitty the fact that you can't deal wield in, in a game like this is really ridiculous uh the talent system and the just uh, the overall skill system is really stupid in my opinion if this is all that there is because it looks like this is all that there is then the uh talent system the skill system far far pales in comparison to a game like uh tangle deep for instance like if we compare a game like like this this talent system and this skill system to a game like tangle deep for instance tangle deep just has far far more skills and passives and abilities just it's in an entirely different fucking level like tangle deep just has so much more uh character um customization just it's not even funny um and it, it's essentially the same game it works on the same uh pr principle with the you move the enemy moves system um and it's just a much more enjoyable game like i say i i do have a uh a review of the game up on my channel even though it's an old review it, it still is a game that i would definitely uh recommend i actually haven't played the game in quite a while um so i should probably check the game out again i know that they released um some dlc not too long ago so this, i should actually try tangle deep again and uh, like i say tangle deep is 15 dollars as well and it just blows this game um tales whatever what's the game's name of blade and tales it just blows it out of the water and then you also have a game like stone shard and stone shard is really good the the animation quality and the art style of stone shard is just fantastic it's still uh pixel uh, pixel graphics but it's just pixel graphics on a whole other fucking level like the the, the art style and the 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 graphics of of um stone shard is just fantastic the items are fantastic it's almost like diablo 2 but it's turn based and um it's pixel graphics like it's just really really good but it uses the same principle as uh, tangle deep does and as this game does and you can just see that the the quality of the game is just fantastic it is really one of the best looking pixel games that i have ever played it's a really really good pixel graphics like on a whole other fucking level and if you're a fan of diablo 2 for instance or diablo 1 even then this is a really good game for you to get into if you are looking for a a turn-based um game like i say but it's still in early access i believe they're still yeah it's still in early access and um let me just check the price of the game i'm not 100 percent sure what the price of the game actually is okay so it's 25 dollars it used to be 20 dollars and then they raised the 20 to 25 dollars so it is 10 dollars more expensive than uh both uh blades and tails and tangle deep but 
like I say, like Tangle Deep definitely is a game that I can recommend over Blades and Tails. Like it costs the same money, but Tangle Deep is simply much better in in all aspects. Frankly, like just all aspects, Tangle Deep is better, and um, I just don't see how this developer can ask fifteen dollars for Tangle uh, for. Uh, of Blades and Tails. It's just not on the same level as Tangle Deep is. And then if you want to splurge and and do that extra ten dollars, then definitely um Stone Shard is is a good game. It, it's a it's a good game. It's not so much better than Tangle Deep. Like Tangle Deep is a really, really good like it's really difficult for me to find any faults with uh, Tangle Deep, to be honest, um, and so I like I can't really recommend Tangle Deep over Stone Shard, but if you have that extra ten dollars and you're just looking for a game that is more like um, Diablo, for instance, then definitely Stone Shard is the game to get, honestly. But otherwise. Uh, they're all the same game. They all use the same equipment system, more or less. Um, both of these games, Stone Shard and Tangle Deep, have far more character customization and skills and talents and passives than uh, Of Blades and Tales does. So it, it beats Blades and Tales out of the fucking water in basically all aspects including the the skill system and then stone shard actually has voice acting some really really good voice acting like the the main uh main na narrator i guess i can say of stone shard has a really fucking fantastic voice um but like i said the game is ten dollars more you know um but yeah, quite honestly, I, I just can't, and the screen goes black again, I just can't recommend this game. When when there are games like Tangle Deep on the market that blows this game out of the water, this game just doesn't have any, um, any right to ask $15. Like I said, it's a solo developer, so it's gonna have issues it's not going to have the same quality it's not going to have the same content that a game has that has an entire team behind it and tangle deep is a prime example it costs the same money but it has so many more um customization options character progression options and possibilities more skill points more more talent points passive points the skill system is just so much better there's multiple classes in talent deep whereas here you just get one class so um that's another reason why tangle deep is far superior because there's something like 10 or 15 classes that you can choose in tangle deep and otherwise than that it's the same game it's just tangle deep has more of everything it's the same combat system the same uh, play style, the same game essentially, but Tangle Deep just has far, far more of everything. It doesn't have the same glitches that this game has. Um, you can actually change your resolution in Tangle Deep. Um, the game doesn't have a fucking weird display mode issue um, like uh, uh, um, this, this game uh, has, you know. Um, so yeah, quite honestly, uh, Of Blades and Tiles is just a game that I can't recommend, to be honest. The developer sent me a code, and, and quite honestly, it's not the game that I would have bought um, if the developers didn't send me a code. It's not the game that I would have reviewed if the developers didn't send, it, send me a code, because I could have just seen from the beginning, from the screenshots, from the gameplay, that a game like Tangle Deep is simply better. You know, I, I, I saw that from the the screenshots but still you know if the developer, developer sends me a code then i will always check out the game if i 
if I have time and all of that, but unfortunately it's just not a game that I can recommend. If the game was perhaps something like seven dollars, you know, like I, I could maybe then recommend the game, but the game is the same as Tangle Deep and like I say, Tangle Deep just blows this game out of the fucking water. It's not even close. So yeah. So yeah, guys, that is pretty much it. Uh, thanks a lot for watching. If you guys want to see more reviews in the future, then you can go ahead and support me on patreon.com forward slash LFP. It allows me to buy more games and do more reviews for you guys. So yeah, guys, thanks a lot for watching and I will see you guys next time.